I thank God for giving me an opportunity to stand before you to share the word of God. If you have your Bible, I want you to open the verse we read yesterday from Job chapter 14 verse 7. Then we are also going to read John chapter 11. We are going to read a few verses from John chapter 11. Then we shall also read Job chapter 14, chapter 7, verse 14. Fourteen verse 7, the Bible says, There is hope for a tree if it's cut down that it will sprout again and that its tender shoots will not cease though its root may grow old in the earth and its stump may die in the ground yet at the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant may the lord bless his word john chapter 11 the Bible says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister mother. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto de death, but the glory of God, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, uh, Martha and her sister and Lazarus. May the Lord bless his word. We are sharing God's word about hope. And all of us seated here, as a teacher, one of the things I like asking my students, especially form ones, every time I interact, the first time I interact with a form one, is to ask them, what do you want to be? And people come to school, with dreams they come with big visions teacher i want to be a doctor i want to be a nurse i want to be a lawyer i want to be a teacher i want to be a pastor all those are good dreams and all of us here we have those dreams and we pray we are hoping that one day we came here to form one, we will finish form four, and after form four, we go to college. After that, we get jobs. As we do those jobs, we will establish families. We become mothers. We even become grandmothers. Those are dreams that every other person has. And this life that we are living is a journey. And this journey, we don't know how the journey continues. And not everybody who begins a journey arrives at the destination they wanted to go to. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, Today I'm going to take a bus to Nairobi, and uh, once I arrive in Narok, we'll get an accident and we will die. You have heard of people who have died in road accidents. You have heard of people who died while they were informed to. These people never planned, it never occurred in their life that you are going through for primary school, you do your KCP, then when you are informed to, you die informed to. These people also had dreams just like every other person has a dream. And as we pursue this journey which is called life, 
the life that we are living has ups and downs. And as I have interacted with God and interacted with other men of God even in the Bible, I've come to understand that this life is not uniform. There are good times in this life and there are also bad times in this life. I was watching some, I was listening to some song in YouTube sung by children, very young children, and they were talking about the song is about Mayatima. And the song touched me of, about what the kids were singing about. They were saying, when you are an adult, treat, treat an, uh, an orphan well, because you never know whether tomorrow your child will also be, be called an orphan. We are living in a life that is so uh, unpredictable, a life that you cannot be sure what tomorrow has in store for us. I like reading books and one of the books I, I have read is a book by Miles Dr. the late Dr. Miles Monroe about maximizing your potential. And one of the books he has read, in, in that book that he has read, written, he says that one day he was inspired and went to, uh, uh, to, to a cemetery where people are buried. And in the cemetery, if you have been to Langata Cemetery, there are several people buried there, and there are, uh, everybody's name is written there. They write, this is so-and-so, lived between this age and this age. So-and-so was born in 1940, died in 1983. So-and-so was born in 1934, died in 1956. Everybody, and always there is a comment written there, a life well lived, uh, etc, etc. Miles Monroe says that one thing that touched him one day, uh, uh, while he was in that cemetery, he came to one of the tombs, and it was written uh, the name of a boy who was born in 1940 and died in 1947. Monroe was asking himself, did this boy live to achieve his potential in this world? Did he live to serve his purposes in this world? Or his life was terminated? God has created you with big dreams and whether the dreams are going to be achieved or not, partly it depends on the decisions that you make today. The life I am living today depends on the decisions I have made in the past. The decisions I have been making in the past are a sum total of what I am today. And there are things I cannot change about myself today because I decided about them long time ago. I was a student like you and by the grace of God I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life when I was a Form 2. It was not an easy decision to make because it was so unpopular by then. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, people come and ask you, what are you missing? Why don't you enjoy life? But the decision that I made, when I look back, I don't regret the decision because some of those people who are asking me why am I not taking time to enjoy life, some of them, unfortunately, I have buried them. We have read a story in Mark, uh, John chapter 11, where we are, that is a chapter that has a funeral. There is a funeral. The Bible says there was a family of three people, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. We are not told about their parents. So I suspect these people might have been offered at early stages, so they remained the three of them, the two sisters and one brother, uh, who is Lazarus. The Bible begins by saying that Lazarus and the sisters were friends to Jesus. This family, they were friends to Jesus. And even as you are seated today, I want to ask you, I want to pose a challenge to you. Who is your friend? 
Lazarus, Martha, and Mary were friends to Jesus. And everybody in that community knew that this family, they are friends to Jesus. The Bible says Lazarus became sick. As I said, life at times brings good things and bad things. There is time and season for everything as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is time for laughing, there is time for mourning, there is time to be born, there is time to die. A time came that Lazarus was sick. And it's like the sisters understood what disease he was suffering from. And they knew that Lazarus is not likely to make it. So the Bible says they sent word to Jesus. They sent somebody to go and tell Jesus that your friend Lazarus is sick. The Bible says as Jesus was doing, going around his ministry, he received information about Lazarus, about the sickness of Lazarus, but Jesus never came. The Bible says after some time the sickness killed Lazarus. The Bible says Lazarus died and Jesus knew that Lazarus has died and Jesus never came. This Lazarus might have been the hope of the sisters, like in the African society where a lot of emphasis, a lot of importance is laid to the boy child, especially these two girls who have no parents, they were looking at Lazarus and they thought this Lazarus is our hope. This Lazarus is like our father. This is our comfort. This is our source of security. We know that as long as we have our brother, nobody is going to attack us. Nobody will mistreat us because we have a brother called Lazarus. These are girls who never had parents. So their hope was in Lazarus. That's why when he was sick, they were ready to do anything to save his life. There are times we are... We, we have issues in our lives and we, we need somebody to, solve, to sort out our issues. We need somebody to come in so that our issues can be made lighter. And this family, I thank God for this family that the Bible says their hope was in Jesus. And they knew that as our brother is sick, there is somebody who is our friend and who is able that if he comes here, our brother is not going to die. At times when you have issues, where do you run to? We are living in a society when people are disturbed, they run to Facebook and they post their issues in Facebook. Last week there was a case on TV about somebody, a boy, a boy called Gerard Mwangi, who posted in his Facebook account and said, that I'm, I'm tired about this life and I'm, I'm going to kill myself and whoever gets my body make sure I am buried well. And as you we were watching the news, the, the guy was found dead. So at times people run to Facebook. They think Facebook has a solution to them. People have got fathers where they run to. That when I have an issue, I know I have a boyfriend. That is the person that you go to and you think the person will give you any hope. But the Bible says that Lazarus and Martha and Mary, their hope was in Jesus. And they sent word to Jesus and told Jesus our brother is sick. These are people who had offered Jesus in their home several times. So there were people who had closely interacted with Jesus. Some of us we want to run to Jesus only in that time when we have problems. When things are going on well, when I'm still scoring good grades in the exam, I don't need that Jesus. When I'm still doing very well, when my body, my health is doing well, I still I don't need that Jesus. When I'm still smiling, when my parents are still there, I don't need Jesus. But the Bible says that these people, even when life was okay, the Bible says they were friends of Jesus. And Jesus could come to that home and he knew that I have friends in this home. The Bible says that Jesus comes 
after four days, after four, after the fourth day after Lazarus has been buried, when all hope is dashed, when nothing seems to be working in your life, when you have totally, even your friends have confirmed that your situation is irredeemable, they have agreed, everyone has concluded, even the doctors have written their report that your case is irreversible. At times they give it a name called terminal disease. That this is a terminal disease and this disease has no cure. So in other words, they are telling you we can only manage your situation and after some time you are going to die. So I'm sure even the people in that village who knew that these are friends of Jesus, they started mocking them and asking them, where was your Jesus when your brother Lazarus was sick? Where was your friend Jesus when Lazarus died? This, your friend is very, he's a fake friend. He even never attended a funeral. And you still continue trusting in, in him and telling, telling us that this is your friend. At times people will abuse you. People will mock you when you are at your down, at totally down. You have that disease and you are not sure whether you are going to recover. You have a condition and you are not sure what next. You, are not, you don't have hope for tomorrow. We are sharing the, 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 our theme this weekend is about that, that there is hope for a tree that has been cut. It doesn't matter what situation you have been through. It doesn't matter what the people have said about your situation. At times, the teachers have written you off. They look at you and they know you are the person who is going to drag their being down. And you have accepted that actually you are going to fail. And you don't believe even when anybody tells you that you can do better. Even when somebody tells you that there is still hope. Even when you are an orphan, you have lost parents. Even when people tell you that even orphans can make it. You don't understand how that can be possible. The, uh, Lazarus was buried. And the people knew this case is finished. Jesus comes on the fourth day. That is a tree that has been cut. The tree has dried. The tree has actually rotten. You hear what the sister tells Jesus that you know Master has been buried for four days. He has don't open that stone because even the, the stench that comes out of that place we will not be able to withstand. But Jesus is, is, is insisting, show me where you have laid him. In other words, there is nothing too late for Jesus. It is never too late for Jesus. Jesus is able to make that tree to sprout again. To make that tree to bud again. He says that when that tree that has been cut, senses, it senses some water, it draws some water, it begins to sprout again, it begins to form leaves again, it begins to form branches again. I love the way Jesus is all over in the, in the Old Testament. When the Bible says when that tree senses water, that water is Jesus. That's why Jesus tells the Samaritan woman, that come to me. Whoever drinks of this water from the well of Jacob will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give him shall never be thirsty again. Somebody say Amen. amen. That Jesus knew. He knew that he is the living water. He is the water that gives life. Symbolically, when Job is talking about a tree sensing some water, that it doesn't matter what people have said about you, how many, how many things are, have happened in your life, but if you can connect that tree that has been cut, if the tree can be connected to the water, it begins zipping the water. The tree will begin budding again. The tree will begin producing leaves again. And the tree will grow.
all again. Somebody say amen. Amen. Lazarus was dead, buried four days. The Bible says Jesus comes and he looks at his friend Mary. Jesus looked at his friend Martha and he looks at their hopeless situation. He looks at how hopeless they are. The Bible says he saw them mourning. The Bible says he was filled with grief. And the Bible says in 11.35 that Jesus also wept. Jesus has come to a funeral. And they think Jesus has come to give them hope. And the person they were thinking is giving them hope begins to weep with them as a sign of hopelessness. Children of God, what does the word of God teach us there? That it's normal to cry. It is very normal to weep when things are not working in your life. It is normal for a girl who is an orphan being mistreated to retreat to a corner and weep. But even when we mourn, we don't mourn and weep like people who don't have hope. We mourn as people who have hope. And we know we have Jesus. Jesus who tells us that my tomorrow shall be better than today. Somebody say Amen. amen. That it doesn't matter what I'm going through today. It doesn't matter what, what, what people have said about my case. People might have written it off and told me, now your case is finished. They were telling them, Mary and Martha, that forget about your brother, he shall never come. The way people encourage other people in the funerals, that Lazarus will not come back, we are the people who shall go there. So they tell you, your parents are dead, don't worry about it, you are the one who will follow them. In other words, they are, they are discouraging you even further. They are threatening you with death. You, you look at your home, there is no hope. You wonder whether that tree that we are talking about, it is a tree that is going to sprout and produce leaves again. Jesus says, show me where you have laid him. They thought Jesus is also going to pay his last respects. Jesus does not pay respect to your problems. He sorts out your problems. Jesus solves out your problems. He doesn't come to agree with human beings and tell you now, you know, you are, this is asthma, and you know asthma has no cure. We can only manage that disease. That this is sick cell anemia, and sick cell anemia is a terminal disease. We have no way out. You can only live on drugs. That you are HIV AIDS, you have HIV, you are, you are HIV positive, and science tells you that HIV up to date has no cure. So you also join them and accept like that. But children of God, we are talking of Jesus of Nazareth, the Jesus of impossibilities, the Jesus who is the resurrection. He says, "Show me where you have laid him." I want us to reason together. What is difficult? Is it healing HIV AIDS or releasing someone who died four days ago? What is easier? I answer me, which one is easier? Healing somebody. Jesus tells them, show me where you have laid him. I'm talking to somebody here. You have lost hope and you have accepted your situation. It's like your case is finished. There are people here who have given up hope. And you know that there is no other way. When I was in Form 3, I became sick. And that's a time that after, shortly after my father had passed on, I also became sick. And I struggled the whole time in school, but I was sick. Most of the days are the days I was in the dormitory sleeping when other boys are in class. That made even my performance to go down. I remember in Form 3, I made a decision that I'm going to request my teachers to allow me not to go to Form 4, because I know even if I go to Form 4, 
I will not do anything because from three I have not done anything. Then I go home for half term. That is in second term from three. My father had passed on earlier. Then I find my mother very sick. Actually, I never found my mother. I, I went to that home. You are excited. You are going for half term the way all of us are excited when you go home and the first person you want to meet is your parent. 